Welcome back, folks, to the Director's Garage. I'm your host and resident idiot, Michael. And today, folks, it's all about electricity. Whoa. Anyway, I'm dedicating this episode to electrostatic headphones. And oh, if you thought the DAC episode was major, wait until you see this. I have three things to unbox today, and we're looking at more than $10,000 worth of gear today. I've lost my mind. First up, I'm gonna unbox this heavy thing. Time to grip it and rip it. I'm all dressed up and nowhere to go. Walking with a dead man over my shoulder. You got that one? Well, it's pretty easy if you're a child of the 80s. That's Dead Man's Party, Dead Man's Party by Oingo Boingo, one of the great party bands of all time. And we're about to have a party right here. It's an electrostatic party. Okay. Yeah, now I made this purchase because of a suspicion I had that the Blue Hawaii SE, this energizer back here, was underpowered. And yes, what's in this box is an energizer for electrostatic headphones. And I think it's time we show it off. Are you ready? <laughs> And oh, we got ourselves a white box. A white box, folks. Hang on. Some nice isolation pads. We don't need these things. And we'll get the white box. Oh. Well, that's a little more manageable, don't you think? <laughs> God, get this mic out of my face. Probably getting in your ears. All right. Uh, so let's keep going on this and see what else is under the next layer. Oh, that was nice. It popped open and I can already see there's some foam in there. And uh, yeah, let's uh, and let's take a look at what's under the foam. Get out of here. Oh, and then there's bubble wrap, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. Man, they must have been really worried that this thing get damaged. Look, there's a package emerging. There's a unit emerging. It's down, it looks a little black. I think this is it. And oh my God, what do we got here? We got ourselves, look at this folks. It's a KGSSHV Carbon. Yes, it's the KGSSHV Carbon energizer but it's more than that because as you can see this is the carbon cc edition and i'll tell you what all those letters mean but uh why did i purchase a new electrostatic energizer even as i'm selling my blue hawaii sc well this right here is supposed to be the most powerful electrostatic amp around and it's built by a real pro and i'm gonna butcher his name berger gun johnson gun johnson i don't know i'm sorry <laughs> i know that's wrong now berger lives in iceland and he builds amps under the name molner and now the origins of what we're looking at right here, most non-stacks energizers come from the brain of a guy named Kevin Gilmore. Now, Kevin Gilmore is the KG in the KGS SHV. Molnar or anyone can license the designs for Kevin's energizers and build it for themselves or build it to sell. In fact, some of Kevin's work is in the Blue Hawaii SE too. Kevin is everywhere in the electrostatic business, but Berger did more than license the KGSS design from Kevin, and he and Kevin worked on hundreds of projects together over the years. So Berger took Kevin's plans and modified the KGSS and made improvements like adding silver point-to-point -point wiring, silicone carbide FETs, among many other improvements. So although it's a KGS SHV, it's called the carbon and the CC is because it's been revised a few times. The CC is the latest edition, which is around version nine or so. And it's said to extend the bandwidth, deliver more power and reduce distortion according to Berger. So I thought, well, before the Blue Hawaii SE is sold off, I should do a shootout with the KGS SHV Carbon CC. That's gonna get old fast. <laughs> and see which one sounds better. 
<laughs> so we have the Odyssey Carbon, or Kerbin, if you prefer. <laughs> Sorry, I love to tease people about their product names, but what if I challenged the both Carbons at the same time? Is that even possible? Well, that's the subject of the next story. See, I've been wanting to get another electrostatic headphone in the director's garage to compare with the Carbon right here. Now, I've had a couple of Stax models, if you recall, the SR009S most recently, and I saw another electrostatic headphone for sale on HeadFi, so I contacted the seller who lives in, wait for it, Singapore. <laughs> Singapore. <laughs> And he told me that he'd be open for a trade. So I sent him a list of gear and I said, here's what I have, what would you be interested in? And for a few days we went back and forth mixing and matching my gear. It was actually kind of a lot of fun before he settled on the LCD-5. I said, great, but he wanted money on top of the LCD-5, which is fair. So I said, well, what about an amp? And he said, what do you have? I said, well, I have this Ferrum Ore Stack and it's worth a few thousand. So after days of negotiations, I packaged up my LCD-5 and Ore Stack and shipped them off to Singapore. <laughs> I tell you, I'm a big dumb guy all the time. The cost of shipping all of this stuff to the other side of the world, we could have gone in on an HD 800 or something. Well, this week I got a package from, say it with me, Singapore. <laughs> so let's open up that box right now. And I think that if you do the math, you can kind of figure out what it is I bought here. But let's go through the motions for posterity and see what it is. And I think we're there. So are you guys ready? You know. And oh, 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 what we have here, folks, is the SRX9000. Yes, apparently the SRX9000 is worth an LCD-5 plus a ferrum ore stack. <laughs> but with the Bakun here, I'm not going to miss the ferrum that much. So. All in all, I think it was a fair trade. A stupid trade, admittedly, given our distance, but we'll forever have the story of our trade to tell our friends. Probably worth it. So yeah, you know, this is used, and I don't mind buying used. I encourage people all the time to buy used. It's a great way to save for something you can't really afford mm -hmm. at full retail. And oh, look at this box. Look at this box. And the manual kind of fell out along with it. I don't know that we need it, but check out this inlay here. They get, this is a plate, a nice plate that's got hammered nails into the cover. So I don't know, little damage up here on the corner, but you know, that's part of buying used. That's part of what you pay for or part of the savings you incur when you buy used. You're gonna have a little bit of nick here and there, but let's get to this thing. Let's take a look at it. What do you say? What do you say? Wow. Oh, we got. Boom. Hey, there they are. There they are. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, it's got to be okay. You got to take the foam out. It looks like to me to get to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here they are. And look at them. Well, first of all, the first thing I'm noticing with these things is that they're metal. They're metal, folks. And that is a huge improvement from the previous stacks built. They still got a little piece of plastic right in here that's sort of doing the ratcheting mechanism. So I guess old habits die hard. As far as the band, this feels like an upgrade. It's not as pleathery as the old one. Uh, and the pads feel genuinely like leather now. And whether they are or not, I don't know. We'll have to look that up somewhere. Note the detachable cables now on the bottom. They go right there. But all in all, uh, a pretty attractive package. Now, I've talked about this guy up here, and I have a firm suspicion it just looks tacked in. It looks like there is no real thought behind this. And I swear to God, 
I still believe this to this day. Some engineer put this whole thing together and they put it on and they were picking up some resonant frequencies from the headband, from the metal headband. And so somebody said, well, do we want to go back and redesign this thing and do it right? And they said, no, nah, let's just tack a little thing in there to damp the resonance out. I firmly believe that's the only purpose this has because we've seen headphones with double rings like this and they hold together just fine. This isn't structural. This is to cut down on ringing, I firmly believe. So other than that, they certainly have improved the swiveling mechanism right here. This looks all special. I do like this grill. And I was a critic when I first saw these of the, the screws that hold the grill in place. And I'm still going to kind of... Mm, mm, because Stax has been known for sleek, sleek designs, and having a screw that protrudes from the bezel, it's just not very Stax to me. That said, it doesn't look atrocious, but it sure looks like kind of not finessed. Anywho, I think we ought to try these things on. Is there an L and an R anywhere in the vicinity? Let's see. Ah! Here it is, look, buried behind the headband right here. You get a little L right there, and on this side, buried behind the headband, you've got a little R. So at least you know where to look for it. And so we'll put these things on and see how they do. Uh, they're a little bit tall for me, so I gotta shorten up the little headband. And yeah, the plastic thing works well enough. I just don't like plastic parts on expensive headphones. It's a thing with me. I think it's cheap and I think you can you can do better at these price points. It's something Meze has really figured out with their products carbon fiber stuff and sliding mechanisms that have amazing resistance and just feel well engineered to the touch. These still have a little bit of an air of a cheap build about them, but they're super comfortable on the plus side. And I think we got to give these things a listen. And it looks like it comes with two cables, which is kind of nice. One's probably longer, one's probably shorter. And I think we can wire these things up. Oh, but wait, I did mention there were three boxes, didn't I? Yeah, we got kind of an interesting collection looking at back at us right now. But my Berger story isn't quite done. Remember, we're going to go back to Berger now. Now, as he was explaining to me the design and the history of the KGS SHV, he told me the best sounding headphone on the amp is an old one, a really old one. And who am I to argue? So he sold me one of his personal headphones. And that's what's in this box right here. This folks comes from Iceland. Iceland! So we have a Stax from Singapore and this box right here from Iceland. So how cool is this episode right now? Doesn't it make you want to kind of like this video and subscribe to the channel right now? This is the particular kind of crazy the director's garage welcomes with open arms. So we've got some layers to go through on this box. And I'm telling you right now, this headphone isn't cheap. Let's dig in. Wah! And oh my God, it's right there. Look at this, look at this, look at this. It's the Stax SR007. And this is the Mark I, folks, the Mark I. This is the very first version of this headphone. And it's about 20 years old. And in Berger's opinion, this is the best mass-produced headphone that Stax has ever made. And that's quite a thing to say, if you ask me. Can it even... I mean, it's 20 years old. It's Y2K. Can it even play music? And oh my god, look at this. They're brown. These are a brown headphone. How cool. And... Look at the build on these. What happened, Stax? 
what happened? What happened when you went to the 009S and everything got all plastic? These are metal and leather wrapped metal at that, so you wouldn't get any ringing. And there's a nice sponge. I've seen this mechanism before. This mechanism is on uh, the Kennertons and uh, a couple other headphones I've seen lately. And the interesting thing about this is it's just that elastic that's kind of suspends these things. Now the cool thing is, look at this, look at this. See how, look how the cable is compared to this side. We'll, we'll check this out. Look at this design. Whoop! You just spin it and it's right where it needs to be. Nice thinking, guys. And it also came with a product card from 20 years ago, which is pretty cool, but it's all in Japanese. I can't even read it. All right, we're getting a little bit long in this episode. So I'm gonna give you a sound impression of the new SRX9000 and the SR700 Marks I. And we're gonna do it on the new alphabet. <laughs> I'm not saying KGS and all that again. And then we're gonna come back in a few weeks and I'll do a shootout with the SRX 9000 and put it up against the carbon. And the loser gets sold. How does that sound? All right, I've got this all wired up now. I've got my two stacks into the Molner back here, which by the way, has the advanced volume pot on it. In addition, all that gorgeous silver wiring on the inside. I really can't wait to check this out, but I'm gonna kick this sound impression off with a little Pink Floyd. And I'm gonna go with Dark Side of the Moon, the anniversary edition, and the track we're gonna audition today is called Time. It's obviously a track that everybody knows, and it's coming through the new DCS Lena. This should be something special. Here comes the clocks. Oh, there's so much detail. I mean, I'm just hearing the clocks click. Oh, <laughs> there's, the, there's the chimes. Wow. Wow! Wow, okay. I mean, detail, detail, detail. That's what an electrostatic does so well. But part of the reason I chose this track was because of that sub bass and the deep bass, and it's gonna hit us. Oh, oh, folks. These things are rumbling down low. Holy man. I have not heard an Electrostack give this kind of deep sub before. I, I'm blown away. I'm taking this in. Because all that detail of the Electrostatic is there. And I've got the Lena, which has got good detail too, but it's... There's so much speed. There's so much speed. But it's not aggressive attack. It's precision without hyper detail. I'm really liking this. This is one of the better experiences I've heard of this album, certainly in recent memory. I'm very impressed with the, with the bass. I've not heard this much thunder down low from an electrostatic period. And on that alone, Stax has an achievement. Now it pulls back a little bit of that bass when we get into the verse. And I think I recall other headphones giving me more support down low. And the other question is, is how well does it do at low volume? There's still good bass down low, even at the lower power levels. And that was something that I think that the Blue Hawaii SE wasn't giving me because I had to turn the volume up so high just to get the bass to activate on the carbon. But I wanna hear this SRX 700 and I want to hear the same part. So we're going to back up and we'll do it again. I'm going to pause it because I don't want to get 
you know, spoiled or jump in mid-game. And here we go. This is now the SRX700. And he claims, if I'm looking for bass, this headphone does it better than the Mark II of the SRX700. And I've heard this before, but I never heard it from somebody... There's less detail than the SRX9000. That's immediate. You can just hear that right away. It doesn't have the micro detail that the SRX9000, that's what happens in 20 years and you thin those membranes out. These have good bass too. They're less airy. Like you don't hear this, the expansiveness of the sound stage and the decay and all of that, they don't have the detail that the SRX9000 has. I wonder if these things have a little more of a musicality to them that the SRX9000 doesn't with all of this bass coming in from down low. I'm even sensing a little more sub on this headphone. Super low. I'd have to go back and check that out again, though. These are smoother. These aren't the spectacle of the X9000. But they sound really good. I mean, I'm impressed with this. It's a little more muted through the treble range. Like, it, it does have a little bit of a veiled sounding effect to them coming off of the spectacle of the SRX9000. But it sounds a little more analog in a way, a little warmer. And it's very nice. So I'm not sorry Berger steered me to this headphone. All right, gonna switch back now to the uh, SRX9000. I won't restart the track. I just wanna pick it up and hear where we're at. But this is a more refined sound, for sure. This is a little more bunched together. It doesn't go out as wide. There's not as much detail, but it's got a beautiful sound shape to them. The, the palette, the timbre of this headphone is beautiful. This one's got more of a show to it and it's impressive. But then when, God, then when all that guitar stopped, they just settle down nicely. The dynamics on this headphone are great. Okay, okay, I gotta go to another track because we can't sit here and listen to Dark Side of the Moon all day. So next we're gonna go to Hugh Masekela and his album, Hope. Uh, and I'm gonna listen to a track called The Gold Train, uh, Stimula. And this track has some of the best detail I've ever heard in a recording. It's a brilliant live recording. And there's some deep sub bass and uh, kick drums happening that are just tasty. Come on, here comes this, the snare. Oh. Wow. Hear the little individual claps of the band around him as Hugh is telling the story. And I love the bell. The bell on this is representing the train as it chugs out of Namib Namibia. Mm. And, and then the sax. The sax is beautiful. I don't know if this has the authority down low of some of my bassier headphones, but this is such a huge improvement for electrostatic headphones. Uh, I'm really impressed. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. All right, uh, let's do another track. All right, next up, we're going to go to some ACDC, and I'm going to call up a track called, let's see, let's find it. It's called Hell's Bells. Because <laughs> you know I want to get some rock and roll into this thing. We're going to check out the MQA version 9624 of Hell's Bells, and I know, yeah, MQA is dead. Yeah, right, don't believe what everybody's telling you, folks. MQA isn't going anywhere for a while. Whoa, oh my God, okay, that was, Hugh Masekela was coming in quiet. This one came in cooking. Oh, we had to reach for that volume knob. You know how that is. 
Oh, the bell is just ringing so clear and haunting. Ah, I love ACDC. Ah. Can these things rock? I have, you know, I have reservations about this, but we're going to try it. The guitar sound really neat. They're vibrant. I, I think these SRX 9000s are onto something. This sound really good. <laughs> they don't rock my world like, say, The Abyss. I love this song on The Abyss 1266 because it's just physical. This isn't physical, but the spirit, you can feel the spirit of the music coming through. Let's check this on the, on the 007. And this is a more intimate sounding headphone. And I think it may actually work even a little better, although I love all that detail out of the SRX9000. Uh, I'm a little spoiled on that. But these have solid bass representation. They're not as detailed. They're clearly not as detailed. I mean, I've said that four times already. But they're musical. They're really musical. If you think a 20-year-old headphone can't compete, this is the exception to that, to that idea. And this has some balls down low. On their own, this is a great experience. Now if I go back... Now if I go back to the 9000, yeah, things are more open. And the bass is great. I probably like these a little better, maybe. But I don't know, these are more musical, so it's a different flavor. It's not, I mean, these I think are better, certainly from a technical standpoint, but these are smoother and they give you a little, a little more feeling in some ways or a different feeling in some ways. We're gonna stop it here now. And for my last number, we're gonna do something a little special. And for this last track, now you might have noticed that the Macintosh has been sitting here on standby for a while. And, and the reason is that for the last track, we're going to be going to the real to real. And I'm going to do a first listen of my Bill Evans Trio Waltz for Debbie that I unboxed on the live stream. You do know we live stream, don't you? Well. I'm going to do a first listen of Bill Evans' Waltz for Debbie, and I'm going to do it on the Stax SRX 9000. So we're going to get a pure experience here. This is one off the master. Let's check it out. Uh, this is this is why you get into reel to reels, kids. Woo! Oh, it's like you're in the room. Now, now I've had some people question the wisdom of spending five hundred dollars and or more on one tape of one album and having an expensive $10,000 plus reel-to-reel -reel deck to play it back and like... Uh, but all I can tell you in my defense is uh, until you've experienced something like this for yourself, it's not fair to criticize because this is so special. It's so special. I, Bill recorded this. This is part of the Village Vanguard recordings, and this was the album that got put out. And it's such a lively recording. It's just a brush on the snare and a hi hat and just some light. Yeah. And these are bright. He's using brushes. It's. It, it, and you just feel that gentleness and Bill's piano is over here 
and he's got such a smoothness to his playing. Now, I've always said Thelonious Monk is my favorite jazz pianist, and it's because Thelonious heard things in ways we couldn't. Bill Evans heard things in the ways we wanted to hear them, and he gave it back to us in the smoothest and most lush way. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful piano. Whereas Thelonious would challenge you with his piano and challenge you to take a, a step, a, jag, a jog to the left or a jog to the right. Bill is like just floating on the music and just saying, hey, let me lay this out here for you. And it's so good. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if you can get any closer to what happened in the room. I suppose you could if you were sitting in a control room with the actual master. And this is one off that master. On a $6,500 pair of headphones on a $7,000 Energizer with a $5,000 pre. That's throwing some gear to give you this reproduction, but I'm telling you... Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is going to be doing some late night... Some late night gymnastics for me, for sure. That's the end. I gotta stop this right here. Uh, the, even the applause, it's... You hear the room. Damn. Oh my god, okay. We're gonna stop it right there, because because I've got to. Okay, so what did we do today? Well, we introduced three new components because I promised you we'd be doing three new components. So first we unboxed this little unit here. This came from Jersey. <laughs> it did, I bought it used from Jersey. But this is the best electrostatic amp uh, known to man currently. And it's solid state, KGSS solid state. And uh, it, can overpower this amp by far. I can I can tell you that just from this listen. I haven't even without doing the comparison. Then we went to Singapore in our world travels for this, the Stax SRX 9000. It's so beautiful my laptop made a little nice sound here. And and then we traveled to Iceland to the maker of this amp right here. The guy who wired this up and assembled it talked to me over email back and forth. We exchanged about 10 emails. I was asking him questions and he's sending me information that I could relay to you about how this amp came to be. And in the process, he told me, well, if you're getting the X9000, you gotta hear the SR. 007 Mark 1. He says it's the best Stax headphone that was a production model, a consumer model ever made. And I'm not necessarily going to challenge that. I'm just going to say that this headphone puts on a bigger show. This headphone has musicality in the same bass just without some of the detail. And it might even be a little more musical but wh what an episode i did you think we were going this deep did i blow your mind yet god i hope so folks because that's the fun that i like to have on this show so that's the mulner kg sshb carbon cc but you didn't think i could get through that did you well i did i'm gonna call it the alphabet amp from now on and the srx9 thousand plus the sr 007 mark 1 three killer electrostatic products and you know i'm going to be doing an in-depth of all of this stuff plus shootouts with the odyssey carbon and the blue hawaii se in the coming weeks see every time you think i'm going in one direction bam we go in another electrostatics are like the godfather part three for me every time i think i'm out 
they pull me back in. Well, next we're going to go back to the final D8000 Pro edition for a sound check. I'm going to do a full in-depth review of that so I can get that headphone back to Audio 46. And then I've got a full review of the Dan Clark Audio Expanse. That headphone is back in house after its repair so much to do so subscribe like hit the bells do all the things it's gonna be a lot of fun so get out of here and i will see you before you know it <laughs>